He's sticking his hand up her a female cow. He couldn't even handle it, he walked off. That's how they get milk. That's f***ing it, that's f***ing right. Like, you know. yeah. Do we beef? Sometimes. Burgers? Sometimes, everyone says sometimes. It's all the f***ing time. All the f***ing time, bro. <laughs> a... a little bit, bro. I guarantee you, I set a camera up in a hut. How about a slaughterhouse in the UK? You're gonna be f***ing I think we have some here. <laughs> Disgusting, bro. It's gonna excuse me, isn't it? I don't know what to say, man. Out. Take care, babies. What are you gonna do when you leave here today? Watch it down, I don't know. Eat me. What's going on, bro? You good? Yeah. Have they given you the lecture, the animal rights lecture yet? You got one from I've Tash. Seen you seen this before? I uh, have. What is it? Are you a vegan then? No. So you've seen this and you're still not vegan, why not? I was for a couple of years. Were you? Yeah. And what happened? I know, I lost You did it wrong? Again. You lost track or you don't, no, yeah, lost motivation? I just watched your YouTube video. Did you really? Yeah, man. Oh, God, uh, now I've, I feel like a failure. Oh, Because you're not vegan anymore. So I wasn't good enough. Oh. <laughs> We're just showing people like uh, how animals have their rights violated in each industry for pigs, for uh, cows, lambs, chickens, fish. This is a gas chamber. That's what they use uh, in the UK. Most of the pigs killed in gas chambers. I think about 88%. That's serious. CO2 gas, you know what's in there? That's what they do, they put it in there. Fizzy gas. Yeah. It causes them suffering and burns their eyes and causes them hyperventilate. Are you uh, Muslims or Muslims, yeah. for Muslims? This is a chicken farm in the UK, bro. Most of the chickens here are factory farm. They'll take them from the factory farm to a halal slaughterhouse, put a halal stamp on them. That's how it works. So we're saying to people, if you don't want to support this, then to live vegan. Because uh, if you're not a vegan, you, you create the demand for this. I'm a piece of shit, rather eat it. <laughs> you're a piece of shit who eats it, though. Yeah, look at that. Uh, well, I used to too, man, 26 years, and I started like looking into it. I was just like mind blown a bit, and I was like, what can I do? So I've just been vegan for like nearly 10 years now. You don't think this is horrible enough? To, it what, is. what animals do you eat now? All of them. Just straight back into the bacon, into the beef, into the, into the chickens, into the... Yeah, a little bit. Dude. Yeah, I know. And you don't feel bad? Yeah. Oh, I do, bro, I do, for sure. But you just tuck it away? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know if you care about animals. Do you care about animals? I do. Yeah. I a little, do. like if I had a pig here and I was trying to stab him, would you be feel a, feel a would, certain way? I would like, I would, I would watch. I don't like things like that, yeah. So if you paid me five quid and I stabbed the pig to give you bacon, would you want that bacon? I wouldn't. You know what, I don't eat, I don't eat, I don't right. eat pig, you know. Are you a, mu a Muslim? No, no. No, no, you just don't eat pork. Do you eat beef? Sometimes. Burgers? Sometimes, everyone says sometimes. It's all the time. All the Time, bro. <laughs> a little bit, bro. Everyone goes like, listen to me, a little bit, bro. So if you couldn't pay me to stab a cow right now and make yeah. you a burger, yeah. why do you pay the shop, right? That money goes down the supply chain. So, so your, your point is, people that buy the food are as bad as the people in the kingdom. Is that what you're saying? I'm going to make an analogy okay. for you. I've got a dog farm to, to sell dog burgers. No one's buying any. Five people come in, they want a dog burger, bang. I take the dogs out from out the back, start killing them, making the dog burger. Then, then, then they go tell five of their friends, and fit, then five come back, and then I start killing more dogs and making dog burgers. Then I have to breed more dogs into the existence to kill them and make dog burgers. And then all of a sudden, there's 50,000 people there. I create dog farms all over the world. So what's going on here? Who's responsible? I mean, if no one bought the dog burgers, I could just leave the dogs there and they'd have a happy life and whatever. And I'd stop breeding them, actually. Maybe I wouldn't make a business out of them. Okay. What do you think of this? How did that make you feel watching that? Well, I'm not, I'm not ignorant towards it. Like, I know what goes on, but I'm, I, I don't exactly know to what extent. When I see this, I, I, I realise, like, how bad it is. It's, it's much worse than this. It's much worse than this. Is a, this is only what we've been able to capture. You can imagine that there's uh, factory farms all over the UK and all over the world. There's only a limited number, like a very small number of invest investigators, and so we can't be everywhere at once. You can imagine everything that's gone unseen. This is just what activists have managed to capture. You can imagine what goes on that we don't capture, dude. And, and all these people here make it happen. These places only exist because of the people here. They go in the shops and they create the demand. So if you go in the shop and you go, I want something vegan, they replace it with something vegan. If you go in the shop and want, I want a burger, they're going to 
We'll slaughter a cow. Would you say factory farming is the norm? Yeah, 100% in the UK, yeah, it's the norm. Okay. Yeah, especially pigs and chickens, it's vast majority, like over 90, 90%. But all those animals, like we're animal, do you know animal rights? The difference between animal rights and like animal welfare? Yeah. yeah. So welfare will be like this, these kind of, this treatment. Animal rights are, regardless of their treatment, they should have their rights respected. So that means you can't kill them, even if painless. These animals have been turned into units of production. They're, they're turned into money now. As a Muslim, right, can't cause suffering to animals, mm. can you? They didn't have factories back when the hadith were written. They didn't have these factories. They have them now. So things have changed now. Yeah. You know, taking milk before was uh, one goat in the back to take some of their milk. Now there's a dairy industry. This can't be halal now, do you know what I mean? Because the animals are being caused suffering and then they're being killed. And in the dairy industry, they're not killed halal. That's an electro ejaculator. They stick it in the ass of the bull to get, make him, force him to ejaculate. It's like they rape him then. He's sticking his hand up her ass. This is a, a female cow. To inseminate her, he couldn't even handle it. He walked off. That's that's how they get milk. Then they they have a baby. They take the baby because the baby will drink the milk. They want to sell the milk, don't they? Yeah. So they take her babies. Yeah, man. That's a, a standard practice in the dairy industry, bro. Standard practice. That's it. That's right. They can't have the calf drinking the milk that the humans want to steal. Yeah. Out. It's the industry. They've only been on, on earth for a few weeks, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Taken from their mum and then killed, just so the mum can keep the milk flowing. So she has to have pregnancy to keep yeah, yeah. flowing milk. I found this, this is me here. Found this calf in a bin at a dairy farm. Where's that? UK. They all go to the slaughterhouse too, the cows, when they don't produce milk, enough milk, or they just, they don't become pregnant easily, or they get lameness. Whatever it is, they... They're rinsed, basically, and it? They've been rinsed that much, they can't produce it. Exactly right. They, they squeeze the everything they, they, they want from them, and then they kill them and put them in burgers, actually. Their bodies go to like second grade cuts. When you see halal, the halal label, you can never be sure anymore because it's consumerism now. You just see the label, you can't trust it. You don't know how they were killed inside the slaughterhouse. They're supposed to not let animals see each other in that. But they don't. They see each other one by one get slaughtered. I guarantee you, I set a camera up in a hut, hello, slaughterhouse in the UK, you're going to be just, I think we have some here. Disgusting, bro. What's the worst thing you've seen in the, in the slaughterhouse? Screaming. Cows screaming. They know they're going to die, obviously. They know something bad's going They can smell blood and all that, eh? Yeah. Terrible. It's been a situation. If we don't want it done to us, why do, why do human beings think it's justified to do it to the animals just to eat them? When we can, we don't have to be, we don't have to eat them. We don't need to. I don't know what to say. Listen to this, bro. We don't need to do this to animals now. Even if you think the perfect halal method, right? When an animal has their throat cut, yeah. they're scared. And then they're breathing, trying to, they're suffering for about a minute before they actually die. Back then you didn't have uh, stun guns. You didn't have a way to do it quicker. And I'm sure if there was an even more humane way back then, they would be doing that. But there was no technology there. True? Yeah. Now we have technology, we have we have alternatives now. And now we have vegan meat. Now we have vegan option. How about yourself? Do you think about what happens to animals? Have you ever seen this stuff before? I don't like to watch it. I want to go vegan, but I just, I never go. Well, yeah, he was vegan blind two years before he threw in the towel. Why did you stop? You just got lazy. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Conditioning. No. Everyone else is doing it. Yeah? I guess so. Uh, you fall back into the crowd, that's what yeah, can happen. Yeah, yeah. Society, social setting, gotta stay strong. No, gotta yeah. stay focused and principled. So if I had an animal here right now, chicken, it's a little chicken. Do you eat chicken? Yeah. I used to eat heaps of chickens. I feel really bad about it. But I said, uh, I'm gonna cut this chicken's head off for you right now so you can have like some fried chicken and just give me five bucks or five pounds, sorry. Yeah. Would you do it? No. Why not? You do that anyway. I know, you just don't think about it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's the disconnect. But that's what you gotta think, okay, I'm going in to buy this. What happened to this bird in order for me to buy it? Okay, they raised in a factory farm. Their life, their existence is suffering because they grow so big, they can't support their own body weight. They get thrown into crates, trucked off to slaughter, gassed and killed. Yeah. You know, that's what happens. So you, you create the, the supply chain. You buy the chicken, they replace it with more chickens. You know what I mean? Over the oh, course yeah. of your life. Sure, man. I mean, it's definitely something I'm gonna have to think about, reevaluate. No more thinking, you already know. It's doing now. Do you know why we talk to the public about this? Obviously, create awareness and that, but we want we want them to stop funding these industries, basically, and not, not just putting money into it, just creating the demand chain that where they pull stuff off the shelf and then they, they slaughter the animals and replace that stuff on the shelf. It's gotta come from somewhere. Without consumers, they don't need to replace it and they don't need to do this to animals to replace it.
placed on demand. Yeah, 100% it is. This is a supply and demand. They don't do this for no reason. The supply can influence demand, but mostly if we, if we get enough people like yourself who care to change the demand, it'll make us a lot easier to get animal rights if we've got enough people on board. Okay. You've been in the slaughterhouse. Most people here haven't, eh? So they wouldn't, uh, nah, cool. they wouldn't nah. want to... <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the conception, really. Most people wouldn't nah. want to pay for that, eh? Do you reckon? Definitely not, no. no. If they had to actually experience the slaughterhouse with the cows screaming and oh, bellowing, horrible, yeah. and then they'd just be put off meat, yeah? Most most people, not all people, some people don't care, obviously, but... You didn't put me off meat, that one bit, because I'm a bit like... Uh... Are you disconnected from that experience and when you buy the meat still? Exactly. You don't buy meat and think of that straight away. No. Yeah. See, when I see meat, I think of that. There are plenty of people out there who kind of kind of know what's going on, and they and they care to some extent, but they don't care enough to stop eating meat. Yeah. Apathy is one of the biggest enemies to the animals because the ones that just walk past, that that will never change, and they, they don't care to change. They don't care enough to change. They're the ones that probably will be the reason that this industry stays in in business, but. If we get enough people on side, then we might be able to get rights for animals, and then it doesn't matter what the apathetic people do, the animals will have rights protecting them, but that's a long way off. Well, there is progress being made. For example, when I was a kid, I, I would never see like vegan food in, the, in supermarkets. Now it's everywhere. It's everywhere, yeah. What do you eat then? It's everything you eat, bro. Vegan chicken, vegan burgers, vegan whatever I want, man. I don't care. But I'm not, I'm not eating that shit. I eat a lot of tofu, to be honest with you. Is that any good? I've been, you know what? I've been actually wanting to try that. I saw my list, you know. If you get it and you marinate it in some sweet, salty, uh, you know, whatever, make it taste good. It's like a vessel. It's like you wouldn't eat a raw chicken breast, would you? Yeah. So tofu, you got to flavor it up. I eat a lot of tofu. It's good, full of protein, calcium, healthy. But we get, we get a lot of vegan, vegan burgers, vegan ice cream, whatever you want, pizza, I don't, anything I want I have basically. If I want to eat healthy, I eat healthy. If I want to eat junk food, last night we ate at Wagamama's. This morning we got uh, sausage, uh, cheese, uh, muffins. We eat whatever we want, bro. I had a vegan toasty the other day, actually. Pasta. Yeah. All right, you know. It's not bad. I don't like pork, so I thought I'd try it. I actually uh, like You mean uh, the, the vegan bacon one? The ham and cheese one. Ham and cheese one, yeah. The vegan one. Yeah, yeah. See? And no one going to get stabbed, you know, like a... No one, uh, there's no killing the... No, no stabbing of the animals. What are you going to do when you leave here today? Well, I was actually, interestingly, I was looking for somewhere to eat, and I was looking for um, a vegan restaurant. Let me show you. <laughs> so on here, use that, you'll find vegan restaurants near you, or vegan options. Now, you've got vegan options at Subway, Greg's, McDonald's, uh, if you want something unhealthy, or you got Wagamama's, uh, so. I, I, I did look on this app, but it, it was all junk food, so I might go to one of these places. You don't have to, bro. It's not mandated. In Islam, it's not mandated. I don't know, I'm, I'm a non-Muslim, I'm not trying to tell you, make your own, you can, you only answer to God. You make your own decision, but I'm just, I'm just being a right. vessel for you to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not trying to just show in you, bro, like, because uh, at least Islam has allow because compassion to animals. And what's the most, com you've got to ask yourself that question, what's the most compassionate thing I can do? And how do I know? Because here you're living in, in you don't, you don't, you don't raise your own animal. You don't see shit, bro. What are you thinking of doing, brother? I'm not gonna eat beef or something like that. You know, if you go to the shop, like, cause an egg and dairy, if you go in the store, you can eat vegan, brother. You can go, you, you can look for vegan If you see vegan and it doesn't have alcohol in it, you know it's halal. Yeah. You don't have to feel a certain way. Now God, if God, God created us, right? He gave us a conscience too. God created this here. Sometimes you gotta to look to here. And if it feels wrong, then obviously that's your, your God given conscience telling you something, yeah? And you don't have to feel guilty when you eat the vegan food. It's because you're trying to do the most compassionate thing. Yeah, for a bit of major impact still. I'm going to think about my choices. It's nice Cheers, to brother. It's good talking to you, mate. Do you think you'll be try going to try to live consistently yeah. vegan from now on? I can't promise that, to be honest. But I can try. I can try. Well, they really need you to... Like, obviously, you don't walk around kicking dogs and that. Um, because of what happened to the dog if you did. And when you aren't vegan, you're responsible for these animals going to be slaughtered on your behalf. That's what's happening. The more demand you make, so you get a chicken, you get two breasts, three breasts, that's a whole chicken. One leg, two legs, a wing. How many animals over the course of a year had to go through this and be slaughtered? 
for yourself. Adds up, doesn't it? It adds up, no. especially over the course of your life. The people that end up working in these places, it can psychologically damage them too. I've heard of people who, like, it really affects them. Like, Yeah, it's like in Auschwitz. It affected the soldiers, didn't it? Which is one of the reasons they started using gas chambers. Put the gas in there and, and have disconnect, but before they were shooting them, putting them in holes and it was causing them trauma. In the same way, uh, this atrocity, even though the animals are the primary victims, people are having to work at these places because it's the best job available to them. They're getting psychological distress, PTSD, perpetrator-induced traumatic stress, all to serve people a product they don't even actually need. You can eat plants. Harming people, harming animals, destroying the, the world we live on. It's not justifiable no matter which way you look at it. Yeah, it's not. There's no excuse for me. It's good talking to you, bro. It's good talking to you. You know, when you walk away, no one can tell you what to do. You, you control yourself through your own conscience. I can't follow you around, and, and, and even if I did, it's completely legal. I don't, I'm not here to... All I'm here is giving people the power. If no one gave a the world will never change. So the basically, individual power is where it's at, and collective individual power, because you can follow the crowd, or you could decide to do something different and follow your own way and say, well, what do I think is right or wrong in my heart? Is it really that hard? Can I make a difference here? Can I make small changes? Can I be a vegan? And then can I be, can I show other people this and try to change other people? And then you're making, you're multiplying your impact. It's inexcusable, isn't it? Nothing comes close, even by a mile, a million miles. It's where most of the suffering and killing takes place on Earth. It's constant, isn't it? It's constant? Constant. And it's everywhere. Oh, sorry. All right, brother. Take care, my friend. You take care.